Hey everybody out there, Professor Tomney back with another uh, mini lecture that I wanted to give you guys today. So let's talk about studying for organic chemistry because that tends to be a huge issue when many students approach me, especially during the time in the semester when we get to the first test. Sometimes the first quiz, but usually the first test. They always want to know what's the best way to study. Um, and I'll be honest, most students do not know how to study. Now, I have mentioned in previous videos that I've run my own research. Um, my postgraduate education was in chemical education. So I did research basically on how students best learn uh, chemistry, specifically organic chemistry is what I focused on. And during that time, I did a lot of surveying and sampling. I went into a lot of classrooms at big universities, at small colleges, and things like that. And I found the number one way that students prefer, that doesn't mean it's beneficial, but that they prefer to study is by rereading notes, rereading lecture material, meaning um, textbook material, uh, and flashcards putting things on flashcards, which I understand for organic chemistry with flashcards, uh, it, it kind of lends itself to that. But there's problems with rote memorization. Uh, and rote memorization, when I say rote, you're talking about memoriz memorizing something for the sake of simply memorizing it. You're not tying it into anything significant, right? So if I wanted to pick up some random um, hobby of some sort, Let's say that I, one of the things I'm interested in is astronomy, right? I, I am a bit of an amateur astronomer. So if I wanted to learn the stars in the sky, I need to put it into practical application. I'm going to need to actually go and look at the stars up in the sky. I can't just put them on the back of index cards and sit and memorize them all day. I can do that, but it doesn't hold any significant meaning outside of those index cards themselves, okay? And that's a problem because, like I was saying, the, the largest way that people like to study for most chemistry classes, especially organic chemistry, is rereading material and note cards. Okay, so what's the problem with this? What's the problem with rereading things, right? We like to go back through notes, and this isn't just chemistry. This, this can apply to all subjects. You take out the notes, you reread through the notes, and, you know, especially if you're really in the mood, you might be highlighting things, right, that your teacher said, this is important, that's important, you, you'll probably see this on the test or what have you. So when you go through and you do that, here's the, par the, the problem that occurs when you're just reading things. The problem is that every single time you read through that, you get a feeling that you understand the material better without practically applying it and doing problem solving, okay? So, for example, one of the things that I'm teaching myself is how to code, how to write code for software, for developing websites, for things like that. I have books, and I read those books, and I also have notes that I take when I watch, whether it's YouTube videos or, um, you know, online classes that I take or things like that. I can reread those notes over and over and over again, and I can reread those books over and over again. I can put little um, snippets of code onto flashcards and practice them and go through my flashcards. But what happens when I open up a code editor to write the code? I'm starting from ground zero. I have to be able to implement it and say, okay, I'm sitting down, I'm doing the actual thing here without the books, without the notes. That's your testing situation, right? That's what you want to prepare for. So, and I found time and time again, if all I do is focus on reading this stuff, then when, whenever I sit to sit down to try to actually produce something or to understand something, uh, it, it leads me into a false sense of security. And I go, oh, well, I've read it again and again and again. The same thing is true with chemistry or with any type of thing. The The better way to go about this is to do practical application. Um, there's a fantastic book that I have been going through on Audible, which is uh, it's like an audio book program on your phone in case you guys um, might use it. The audio book that I've been listening to, and I'm assuming there's you can buy hard copies or things like that, 
is a book called Make It Stick, The Science of Learning. I think it's something along those lines. Um, I can put a description down in the, or I'm sorry, I can put a link down in the description below so you guys can take a look at it. And they basically say the same thing. They say the problem is, uh, they confirm everything that I've seen. They, they say the problem is, when you look at it through research, most students like to read things over and over again. And every time I read it in the context of what I'm looking at, it makes sense, right? So if I turn around and I give you some sort of organic chemistry lecture, and then you go home and you look at your notes that we went over in class and the specific examples we went over in class, and those are the only things you do. You don't practice problems outside of that. You don't apply that material to a new situation, right? You're, you're going to be stuck in that frame or that mindset where you say, well, yeah, this makes sense every time I go through this because I've already seen this. I've worked these problems out. And the same thing for the book. Every time I read something in the book over and over and over again, I'm reinforcing that same little snippet of information. And it can sort of lull you into this false sense that you really understand something. And then as soon as I say, okay, well, X and Y are going to equal product Z, and then I turn around and I say, well, what happens if I don't use X and I take Y and I add it to W, right? Some other reagent. Is it still going to give me Z? Is it going to give me something else? Well, if you take these organic chemistry principles or any chemistry principles and you apply them and you get lots of practice solving problems, you're probably going to have a wider scope or a wider variety of information that you have been exposed to and you'll be able to go about solving these problems in a more effective manner than just the one particular example or the several particular examples that you have been looking at, okay? Um, and it's hard because we instinctually, we always want to go back and we want to read the notes. We want to look over that stuff because we've it's familiar. We've learned that. We know that that's directly what came from the professor's mouth. That's directly what came from the textbook or the publisher. So that, that valuable information, it's got to be critical, right? That's got to be the key source when I'm trying to solve this stuff. And it's important. I don't want to downplay rereading your notes or looking over it. But I do want to downplay it as the main source of study. You should not use it as your main source of study. So this book that I was talking about, they say that's the problem. Students always, they, they want to go for reading. They want to go for constantly reevaluating the information coming out of class. The number one way to retain information, number one, bar none, absolutely bar none, is to test yourself. You have to practice, okay? So you need to be seeking out additional questions. That's why on YouTube, on my channel, I post a lot of these practice sessions that we work with, okay? And when we do these practice sessions, they're there for a reason because you shouldn't just look at the lectures and say, oh, well, I understand the two or three examples he did in the lecture, and so now I, I've mastered this material. No, and you haven't even mastered the material after I have posted those practice sessions if you get through those, right? Because then you'll be familiar with that. Go out, find somebody else's YouTube channel. Practice their material. Go pick up one of the best suggestions I could give you, right? Because you're not going to necessarily have access to tests ahead of time. And every teacher can test it a little bit differently when they're looking at stuff. One of the best suggestions I have, pick up an organic textbook. Now, certainly not the new ones. They're insanely expensive. But pick up an old organic chemistry textbook from, you know, five years ago, ten, even ten years ago. Pick up a cheap solutions manual to go, go with it and filter through and pick out all of the problems that are mirroring the type of stuff you're working through in class. You'll get a huge, huge exposure to this sort of stuff, right? Find websites, find forums, hire a tutor to develop questions for you. Ask your instructor, say, could you potentially stick back and we'll do office hours? I know for my students, if they ask me and say, you know, could I go over extra questions? I'm happy to stay after class and to give them additional questions. Just come up with them off the top of my head and these, you know, we, we can sit down and practice these questions. It is absolutely essential that you quiz yourself, you test yourself, you go through this stuff over and over again. And they say in this book, okay, I, I know I keep referencing this book, but it's a very good book and if you'd like to learn how to study properly. They've done all sorts of experiments, and you can read the literature on it, where you take two groups, you set them aside, and you say, you're going to be tested on this material, right? They know that they're going to be tested. 
they're each exposed to a certain amount of lecture material. They get the same notes. And then one group, they say, study your notes for as long as you want. Memorize, cram, do all that kind of classical stuff. And then with the other group, they say, yeah, you can do that stuff, but we're going to test you before you come and take the official test, right? So we're going to quiz you on it. And that's one of the reasons I give quizzes in my classes. Despite the fact that you may not do as great on the quizzes as you do on the test, they're learning experiences. And I'm testing you whether you like it or not. I'm testing you ahead of time because testing is the best way to retain information, right? Because you see it in that native form, in that native testing form. You come across something, you go, I've never seen this before. I understand the general principles, but this is a new context for me. I need to figure this out. This is a puzzle that I need to solve, right? So every time that you expand your horizons and you try new problems that reference back, and it's important to reference back to this stuff, right? Everything should scaffold. That's a big part of learning. You need to build one level on top of the other and scaffold back when you are sort of working on this new material. So when these experimenters, they basically set up these tests, right? And they say, you're both going to be, to both groups, you're both going to be tested on this material. Group A, you're permitted to read your notes and you can read them right up to, uh, you know, and before the exam time and then put them away and take the exam. Group two, you're going to have several series of quizzes. Maybe it's just one quiz. They even show that one quiz can substantially improve your testing the second time around and the amount of information that you retain. But the the what they find is that people who cram or study, they do great, okay, not necessarily great, but they they can outperform their peers that don't study or reread notes but take a quiz short term. But long term, as far as the ability to retain information and apply it, like a day later, a week later, right? Not five minutes before you're doing something. The people who quiz themselves and test themselves have huge, huge advantages over those that just reread notes. And so I'm here to encourage you guys, test yourselves, pick up old textbooks and go through the solutions manual and work through those problems. Find every additional resource you can. Ask your instructors for old tests or old quizzes if they have them. Get your hands on as much material as possible and practice, okay? That is the way that you're going to apply this stuff. And you have to remember how many students freak out at the end of the semester because of what? The final exam, right? And the final exam is cumulative. We want to test you on all the knowledge that you've supposedly acquired over the past several months that you've been learning with us. So many students, right, this becomes the, the rite of passage. This becomes the, you know, for one entire week, I'm, you know, going to barely eat and I'm going to stay up all night and I'm going to cram, 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 and I'm going to make 250 flashcards and all that kind of stuff. And the problem with that is that you're really handicapping yourself. You are really handicapping yourself when you turn around and you say, I'm just going to put all this on flashcards. I'm not really going to practice the material. I'll cram for it, I'll have a general sense, I'll skate by with what I can, and it, let me tell you something, if you're not practicing this stuff, and you're not seeking out that additional practice, and usually if you're not practicing on a regular basis, your brain is going to dump that material within f at 48, maybe 72 hours at the most after the exam. It doesn't need it anymore. So when you get back to that point where you're taking a final exam, right? Or when you get to Orgo 2 and you realize all the Orgo 1 material you needed, you're going to get to a point where you say, well, now I have to restudy all of this material because what did I do? I just simply threw it on flashcards. It didn't have a whole lot of meaning to me other than getting me through that exam at that time. And this becomes problematic because what happens is instead of building on what you're doing and saying, okay, here's step one, here's step two, I'm going to practice and continue with this stuff. You basically say, oh, I'm just going to cram it all in in one session and then I'll do great on the test and then I'll dump it. I don't need to worry about it, right? Because test two isn't going to be the same stuff as test one. But what happens when it comes back? All the cramming, all that stuff. Now it's on steroids, right? When you get to a freaking final exam, you're, I mean, you're cramming like there's no tomorrow. It makes the regular tests look like they're nothing in terms of the amount of effort that you're putting in when you get to that point, 
right? It's an all out. It's a, you might as well be tending to a newborn child because it's like you're not sleeping. You are barely taking care of yourself. Um, and that brings up another point that I, I want to mention. Um, and I know this one's a little bit difficult to sell college students on and I understand. Okay. Um, but sleep, sleep is a very, very important commodity and you do not want to squander it. Um, I know students have a tendency to stay up very late when they're studying for exams. It is a mistake to stay up extremely late when you are studying for that kind of stuff. Um, I know you th you think that you're getting more information, but basically what's what's called your diminishing returns as you continue to push forward and you continue to lose sleep, you're going to be retaining less and le almost exponentially going upwards. You're going to be retaining less and less every hour that goes by. Okay, and while you may still have some of it up there and you're keeping it, you're severely handicapping your performance during a test. Whether you want to talk about the speed at which you can recall things and execute things, how clear headed you are when you're trying to do calculations or recall that sort of information. When you rob yourself of sleep, which is absolutely essential for the brain and the body to work together you are greatly handicapping yourself and that handicap is in exchange for very very small beneficial amounts of extra study time uh, and when i say that that not necessarily that the study time allotted to you is small you might get an extra six or eight hours when you should have been sleeping that's that's a good chunk of time but what you actually effectively extract out of those hours is very minimal right it's just like saying if you send me out to start digging a hole in the backyard, right, and I have a good breakfast, I have a good night's sleep, and I, I, I can start making serious progress on this hole. I'm ready to go, right? I'm amped up. I've got lots of energy. I'm refreshed. And then I turn around and I go, well, I could continue to make progress on this hole if I stay up all night and I continue shoveling. Well, what's going to start happening? I'm going to get weaker as the day goes on if I'm not taking care of these needs, whether it's feeding myself properly, getting enough sleep, especially the sleep portion is what I'm focusing on here with, with college students and that mentality, right? And as I continue to get weaker and I'm trying to put in this effort, I'm going to be making smaller amounts of progress, right? And so you could turn around and say, oh, look at how much he's done in the first three or four hours. But then if I don't come in and cool off or take a nap or get a glass of water or right and I just continue you work me throughout the entire night what's gonna happen well I'm gonna start getting tired I'm gonna start slacking off some I, I'm going to make very very little progress and you could say well what the hell I gave you eight additional hours that you stayed up and you were out there shoveling the hole why am I not seeing the same progress that I did before well that's obvious because I'm completely strained and stressed out at this point and so I have such diminishing returns I'm giving you back such a little amount for what you're putting in the eight hours that you're giving me at a certain point it's time to call it quits and you need that sleep uh, especially for cognitive functioning for retaining information all that kind of stuff um, nixing the sleep is really not where you want to cut corners okay the best place to cut corners as unpleasant as it may be is your your leisure time right your video games your TV your reading whatever it might be you need to cut that portion out at least just while you're preparing for the tests um, and, and that time should be dedicated to practicing problems practice if you take nothing else away from this video test yourself find lots of problems and test yourself. That is the way that you want to be studying for any type of exam that you come across. I, you know, on this channel, we particularly talk about organic chemistry and a good amount of general chemistry. Um, but that's how you want to be taking care of your study habits. You want to be testing and practicing yourself. So let's do, you know, 10, 20% rereading notes. It's good, glance over them, take a look at them but get your hands on practice and go for it. I mean, just annihilate as many problems as you can because getting that kind of exposure, you will, I, I guarantee you, if you are constantly practicing and you're getting, you know, 50, 60 of these types of problems from old textbooks or sources online or anything like that, by the time you go into that test, you will demolish 
anything that's in your path because you have so much practical experience solving these problems now instead of sort of spoon feeding and comfort hand holding of the rereading the notes and looking at the same five or six examples over and over and over again and like I said before lulling you into that false sense of security okay so that's pretty much it guys again I will leave a link in the description below um, that leads to the book that I was talking about in terms of the study habits and how to make things stick get your practice get your practice get your sleep all right till next time I will see you guys later uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you find it helpful. And certainly, um, as much as I like doing these videos, go check out the lectures and the practice stuff, right? The actual material. See you guys later. Take care.